Hello Floss Tube friends and welcome back to my channel. It's Lauren, lovely to be back with you. It feels like it has been a little while. I did not film my usual mid-month update this month and that is partly due to being very busy and partly down to the fact that I had not stitched too much in the first half of this month because I was very ill. I am feeling much better now and I thought I would just give you a quick Floss Tube Extra episode to tell you a little bit about the Mirabilia retreat that I attended last Friday to Sunday. So it was a week ago today that I went there. I had a fabulous time. It was the Mirabilia Northampton retreat organized by Zarina from Hawkins Hobbies and I had an amazing time. And I just thought that I would split out um, all my retreat stuff into this separate video so that in a couple of days time when I do my end of month stitchy update it won't be quite so epic and long. So here is everything retreat related. Um, the retreat as I said started on the 21st which was Friday. I arrived at about half 10 to 11 in the morning went straight to the stitching room and the lovely Nadine from um, Nadine X Stitch, Nad's X Stitch um, helped me with my bags. I was struggling to get my bag through the door. She grabbed my bag and marched me over to where I was sat um, and helped me find my spot. And I was sharing a table with a bunch of lovely ladies that I had previously met at a previous retreat. So I was on a table with Sam, Rachel, Anita and um, Aileen, Charlotte and Laura and also Ina who arrived a little bit later on the Friday but yeah it was a lovely table everyone at the retreat is so lovely and friendly but it was really nice to be back on a table with a lot of the ladies that I spent my very first retreat with so that was really nice and as you might imagine I got lots of stitching done I did get quite a lot of stitching done although there was also a lot of chatting and talking I took four projects with me and basically only ended up working on one. Um, I did a tiny bit of stitching on my November Blue Topaz Fairy Mirabilia piece, but I just wasn't feeling her for some reason. And after 30 minutes on the Friday, I put her away, got my Snow Maiden out and I worked on Snow Maiden for the entire weekend. So I will of course show you my stitchy progress on her in my end of month update but I'm not gonna show you that today because today I just wanted to give you a little peek at all the lovely stitching that was on show at the retreat itself. So I am going to first show you the competition table. So at the Mirabilia retreat, there is a competition for the best finish. The finish does not have to be framed, but it does have to be a completed cross-stitched piece. And there were 15 beautiful entries this year, I believe and I have filmed them all to show you. So I will just cut to that now and give you a lovely peek at all the beautiful stitching that was entered into the competition. So these are the competition entries. They were all gorgeous. This first one is a smaller one, Christmas Elf Fairy. She's small, but she's beautiful. I have that as a kit in my stash, but I love the fabric that's been picked here. I also love the fabric on this gorgeous Waiting for Ships Mermaid. It was like the perfect choice. It was a bit more blue than it's showing on here. It's looking a bit more grey on my filming, but it was beautiful blue, like bluey grey, really gorgeous. Bluebeard's Princess was so sparkly and again, an amazing fabric choice. It works so well. Just gorgeous, gorgeous stitching. Absolutely love all of these entries. It was so difficult to vote. Snow Queen here on a beautiful opalescent. And just love the details on this with all the crystals that are hanging off the reindeer. And I really like that that one has an animal in it because not many of them do. Tiger Lily. There were two Tiger Lilies entered into the competition and this one has a gorgeous hand-painted mount which was amazing. And November Blue Topaz. I keep calling her November. She's December. December Blue Topaz Fairy. Um, a very different fabric choice to mine because I'm doing mine on a very dark fabric but she looks lovely on that one. Beautiful beading. So many beads on her. Emerald Mermaid. I have this pattern in my stash so I may stitch this at some point myself and this version has been converted to have red hair so she's a little bit different from the charted. 
the Sweet Pea Fairy is really, really gorgeous. Again, just another lovely fabric choice. So, so pretty. And this piece I thought was absolutely amazing. I keep saying it, but these fabric choices are all just spot on. <laughs> Um, and this one was absolutely fabulous opalescent fabric and the detail in her was just amazing. Absolutely love that stargazer piece. So, so pretty. South Seas Mermaid is absolutely stunning in person and I think she is translating quite well on film here. The detail in her was just incredible. So, so much beading on this one. I don't ever think I've seen a Mirabilia with quite so many beads. She's fabulous. I'm so happy that I have that pattern. <laughs> Miss Black Swallowtail. I had never really given much thought to this design, but then seeing it stitched and all those tiny little beads on her wings was just really, really beautiful. And the mount that she's in there is gorgeous. March Aquamarine Fairy. I have this in my stash. I don't have a kitted. But again, she's just beautiful. Like the intricate beading at the bottom of her skirt was just so lovely and so neatly done. Really, really pretty design. English Roses. And this was incredible. Like I hope that the detail in this is showing well on the camera because I've just never seen anything like it with all the ribbon detail for the roses and the special stitches. She was really, really gorgeous. Miss Christmas Eve next. She is one of my favourite Mirabilias that I don't actually have the pattern for. I need to get round to buying her, but I just loved seeing her stitched. I've seen her stitched a few times. She does seem a popular choice. Love this fabric, the opalescent, like neutral that she's on. Gorgeous stitching, just beautiful. And lastly is the second Tiger Lily entry, but this time mounted in a rectangle instead of the circular one. But again, a beautiful hand-painted mount. Absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous framing. Shows her off absolutely perfectly. So that is all 15 entries to the competition. Like I said before, it was so incredibly difficult to vote. They were all worthy winners. Gorgeous stitching. The winning entry was... Nadine's entry which I didn't know it was hers at the time because you don't know who has stitched what but her beautiful uh, portrait piece with all the like lovely ribbon work and everything on it was the winning piece which was really well deserved and she got crowned with the Mirabilia crown which she now gets to keep for a year which happened at the gala dinner event which was such a fun evening we had like a Mirabilia quiz um, had the old Mirabilia Queen crowning the new Mirabilia Queen, and it was just lovely. Um, there was plenty of other stitching on show, and unfortunately, I didn't do like a pan around the room this time, which I have done at previous retreats, but I was just so busy either stitching or chatting and having a good time. I didn't end up doing that this retreat, but I did go and film at the finishers table. This is not all the stitching that was... Um, that was displayed because there was a few pieces. I think Ina had a few pieces that were out on a separate table and I didn't get around to filming that table. So I'm very sorry, Ina. She had some lovely pieces and some really cute finishes. She had like a lovely like needle book that she'd made out of loads of stitching and like a gorgeous um, finish of one of the Mirabilia like snowy animals. I think it was like the, the winter bear and it was gorgeous with all piping around it, beautiful. Um, unfortunately, I didn't manage to film Ina stitching and I think there was a couple of other piles of stitching that I didn't capture on camera, but I did capture a lot. So we can have a little sneaky peek at all the stitching that I did capture on film. And um, so here it is. I do not know the name of this piece, but obviously it's a Chatelaine and it is absolutely gorgeous. Like the amount of detail and work that goes into these designs just blows my mind. I would love to go to one of the Chatelaine retreats at some point in the future and just see so many more of these being stitched. Like they are absolute works of art. Amazing. So sparkly as well. Like the beads on them are always beautiful. I think this is Christmas Flourishes. I think. Please don't lynch me if I'm incorrect. Um, there were a lot of designs on this table. I do not know them all. But that was absolutely beautiful. 
one of the Nora letters here, so one of the alphabet letter fairies, and another one from the mermaid letters, and another one again from the fairies, and then one of the star signs, so this is the Aquarius star sign as you can see. I do have a couple of the star signs in my collection but I've not stitched any yet. Beautiful Nora Corbett here. And I do love this one. This is the Tree of Hope. I have this pattern and it was really lovely to see that stitched up. Gorgeous design. And then all the ones underneath it are stitched by the same person. So there's a lot of stitching. Beautiful mermaid there. Absolutely gorgeous. Love the opalescent fabric. I just love the colours of her. It's one of the petite mermaids here. And that is the emerald mermaid again that we saw on the competition table but without a hair conversion. So that's with the original brunette hair that was charted. Bewitching pixie here, I'm not sure which one. Is that Lilith of Labrador? I think, perhaps. Hopefully I'm right. Gorgeous, gorgeous beading and another sparkly fabric. Some gorgeous butterflies here by Nora Corba. I do have that pattern. And this cute little stitch. I love all the little animals. So sweet. I think that might be like a Bell and Boo one. I'm not sure. I don't know what this one is at all, but it is lovely. A nice winter piece here. Beautiful sparkly fabric. Lady of the Flag. Looking very majestic, beautiful finish, so big, she was massive. Oh yeah, I remember this one now, this lovely Queen Elizabeth tribute piece, absolutely gorgeous, so much work in one. This is Crystal Christmas, it was kind of hanging off the table, <laughs> so I've not got all of it in the shot unfortunately. Another gorgeous mirror there. All these are from one person. Beautiful geisha. I think that's Miss Cherry Blossom, I think. And I've forgotten her name, but she is lovely. <laughs> so much stitching. I cannot believe that all of this pile is from one stitcher. It's crazy. I do know her, that is Titania, Queen of the Fairies. I have her have her kitted, I think. Um, Princess Eliana, there were quite a few people working on her at the retreat, but she was really lovely finished. Another lovely geisha. I think this is either the night or the day nymph moth piece. I do have that pattern, beautiful. Another petite mermaid. Not sure what she's called, but she's lovely. Love the colours. Very, very pretty. I do really like the petite mermaids because I'm they don't take too long to stitch. I've got the holly pixie there. Another one of the little Nora Corbett's don't know the name of this one or the name of this one but I'm sure they're all in the series ah that's Sea Flora I do like her one of the reindeers from like the Christmas Couriers collection Bewitching Pixie another Bewitching Pixie on the same fabric both gorgeous Miss New Year's Eve I think that is and then the Christmas elf fairy again and Aphrodite gorgeous yet another pile of beautiful stitching from a single stitcher here love these smaller designs they're so pretty another bewitching pixie there with the pumpkin really love the green fabric on this think it makes the orange just pop 
Another petite mermaid. Very, very pretty. All these sparkle fabrics. Just beautiful. And love the wings on this piece. I don't know her name, but she's very pretty. I don't know that I've ever seen her before. Another petite mermaid. Lily of the Valley, who I love, and I am going to start her soon. She's amazing. The little holly pixie. Beautiful. I think this is lyrical. I'm not, but I think it is because I have that pattern. Another gorgeous mermaid, a little bit different. One of the ones that's in a frame. Really pretty. I don't know this one. Is it Marigold? It could be. I'm guessing. <laughs> this is the little sunflower fairy that's from the Hirschner's website because I have that and I have stitched her. I think this is Water Lily or something similar. Another bewitching pixie on a very striking fabric choice. Really lovely. Another petite mermaid. Can you believe that this entire pile is from one person? It's incredible. Just gorgeous. I love that fabric choice with all that pale, kind of white and pale blue stitching. Another little fairy. I have this pattern, although I've forgotten its name. <laughs> I don't know who this is. I have not seen it before, I don't think. But she's very pretty, as is this one. This must be like a series that I've not seen. Tiger Lily. Looking very beautiful. Really lovely design. I can see why so many people want her. And that one is just stunning with that dark fabric with the red. Absolutely beautiful. So much lovely, lovely stitching. It's another one of the fairies with their wings on full show. I love her boots as well. Another gorgeous Nora. And I can't believe that, like, this isn't even all the stitching that was on display. Like, there was another entire pile. Oh, Miss White Clover. There was another entire pile of, like, Nora and Mira's that I just forgot to film. Just so much work. So much work. Love this little pond pixie. I have this pattern. She's very sweet. Beautiful, beautiful. I really don't know what else to say. Bewitching Pixie with a black cat. And then I have no idea what this is, but it was very cute. Really nice beading and like a fringe detail. And this looks like Snow White's clothes from the fairy tale. And I love the roses in that crown. Done with ribbon. Very nice stitching. And then there were a few framed pieces. So I've got this lovely one here. I think that's Berry Collector. And I think that that is Anita's stitching. And this one is definitely Anita's stitching. So Anita the Violet Stitcher. And I loved her fabric choice for that one on the broomstick. Absolutely amazing and lovely framing, lovely mounts. I really do think that one of my favorite parts of going to a retreat is seeing all the stitching that other people have done and completed and bring along with them. I just think so many of those pieces are amazing and it's really nice, especially if you've got a pattern in your stash to be able to actually see it stitched because it's always so much better to see it stitched in real life than to be relying on like the model stitch photo on the front, which especially with Mirabilia's are not always that clear. Um, and don't really give you like a true appreciation for how beautiful some of these designs are when they are stitched. Um, I hope that you've enjoyed looking at that stitching. And of course, the other huge part of any retreat is the shopping. 
and I have done a little bit of that. Um, I've also got my mystery bag. So at the Mirabilia Retreat, there is the option to do a mystery box exchange, box or bag. There are guidelines and a certain number of items that go in the bag with prompts to kind of help you decide what to buy. I received my bag from um, Gabriella, and it's really funny, at my first retreat uh, last April, um, I also received Gabriella's bag then, so I've had two of her lovely mystery bags. I'm very lucky because I got some lovely things. Um, so I will show you what was in my mystery bag first. I got this lovely Ink Circles bluegrass chart, which is like just um, a single colour design. I can stitch it in any colour I like. Um, they do specify 939 DMC, but I will probably pick something different. I think the prompt for this one was something black and white. So that was my first mystery goodie. I got another chart, which was something to make you think of spring. And that is this lovely hands-on design um, spring pattern from the Year in Chalk collection. Very cute. And I did actually pick up from Marnie's Mixed Bag who were in attendance, just dig it out of here, um, the Ohio Lemon Pie Thread. Let's show you that a bit better if I can. The yellow over dyed thread to go with that. And I would like to try and squeeze in stitching that while it is still spring because it's only a very small design. Um, I'm not sure that I will go ahead and seek out any of the others in the same series because I seem to remember like I have seen a couple of them and certain months I think one has like a barbecue on it and stuff um yeah but as just a standalone little small for spring I do love that I also received this lovely cross stitch project log book which is beautiful um and I show you inside most of the pages look like this so you can like log each project that you're doing on a separate page with loads of notes about everything you could possibly think of relating to that project and it also has on it um, like a floss inventory section and things like that and um, as lovely as it is I'm not sure that I'm going to use this just because I log my stitching in a five-year diary that has now been ongoing for a couple of years and I'm happy with that and I don't think I want to switch my method. Um, but it is an absolutely lovely little cross stitch log book. Really nice. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it at this point. Um, I received this lovely Dimensions Gold kit of hydrangeas. Really beautiful. And um, it is a petite dimensions kit and it has like beading as well as cross stitch. You can see the beads in the back there. And that is called Hydrangea in Bloom. Beautiful. I, oh, this was, um, I've forgotten what all the prompts were, but there was one prompt that was something under two pounds and I got this lovely Weeks Dye Works thread called Brick in this lovely red color, really usable. Ah, there's always typically something froggy in these boxes. And this was my frog gift that I received. So this is the spring bouquet little frog lily pad ornament. I do have strong feeling that I do have this in my stash already because it's so cute. Um, but you know, it is so lovely and only a small. I could always stitch it twice possibly. Um, I might give one to Daisy and one to Hadley. They're very cute. For the nine year anniversary item, I received this beautiful lapis lazuli charm i'll just hold it so it doesn't fall out of the box um it is like a little elephant inlaid with a beautiful blue stone and it's got little tags on it i think they say dream and hope gorgeous really love that and what else did i get i'm coming to the end of my mystery bag ah i got a lovely piece of hand dyed fabric this is like a lilac -y, cool almost grey with sort of bits of pink really really beautiful really nice you're probably seeing straight through it there I have not picked a good place to film for this have I I've just decided to film in the kitchen where it's quiet if I fold it over you might be able to see it a little bit better 
Um, but yeah, beautiful piece of fabric. And that is a 28 count even weave. Um, it's a good size piece. I will definitely fit a fancy lady on that, which is nice. Um, I have my clue, so one of the um, things in the box has to be a clue as to where the person lives who did your box. So this was my clue, <laughs> an East Sussex pub walks guide, so I will keep this handy in case I ever go there. <laughs> and lastly, I've saved to last because I think this is my favourite thing in my whole mystery bag. For the something playful prompt, I got a little stitch. And he's so cute, look at him. And Stitch kind of became our table mascot um, for the Saturday and the Sunday, like after I'd opened him. And um, every time I left the room to like go to the toilet or nip to the shop or go wherever, people kept moving him and I had to keep finding him. Um, and it became kind of a running joke that Stitch was being a very naughty Stitch because I'd hung him on my Lowry stand, but people kept moving him. Um, and in the end I did actually resort to just taking him everywhere with me so I just like clipped him to my bag so that people couldn't steal him but yes he had lots of adventures uh, around the stitching room being hidden in various spots which was quite fun um, but I just love him and so far I've managed not to let Daisy steal him because she's not seen him um, yes I've been keeping him hidden <laughs> so that was my mystery bag and then of course I did do some shopping as well. So there were the various shops there and there was also the D stash table. Um, I did get this coaster, which I'll just show you quickly. I didn't buy this, but everybody received one of these from Zarina, just a memento of the occasion, along with a badge. I've not got the badge to hand, but the badge was the same, um, but just with my name on. So shopping. Um, I This is a mix of stuff I bought from the shops and stuff off the D stash. Uh, so this was a D-stash purchase, a lovely piece of opalescent hand dye, beautiful in like this bright peachy orange, love it. I also got these three pieces that I bought from Sam. I'm not going to unfold them, but you get the idea. These are all even weave and they're all roughly 18 by 27s, um, all in 32 counts. So I've got that purple one lovely blue one and this like lovely like orangey yellow like a bit buttermilky piece it's very pretty and I know that I hand dye and that I sell fabric myself but even so like when I see a really nice bargainous piece of fabric on the d-stash table um, sometimes I cannot resist um, yes I also grabbed this Permin fabric which is a large piece. I think this is like, I think it might be over a hundred. Yeah, it's 140 by 50 centimeters. It's a big piece, 32 count. And this is the Permin Amber Linen. And it's a very stiff, like scratchy sort of linen. It's similar, I think, to the material, like the chocolate brown material that I have in my stash to do, just thinking, dressmaker's daughter on i think it's the same i think that might be a perming fabric as well like their linen is always very stiff um but you know i'm not bothered by that and i just thought this was a really nice neutral colored piece that would be good for a lot of things uh, any other fabric yes a couple more pieces um so i also got this lovely again hand dyed piece of 25 count even weave which is a bit of a random count um the only thing I think I've ever stitched on 25 count is my full coverage, which is very unloved. I think I started that on 25 count. Um, obviously, if I stitch this over two, it will end up being, the design will end up being just a little bit larger than 14 count. Um, but that is probably what I'll do. I'll stitch something over two on this. It will just end up like a little bit bigger than it usually would. And last piece of fabric, I did grab this from Sparkies, um, which is a gorgeous, like, green, like, deep green, and I just loved it. I just loved it. I thought that was a really, really nice colourway. So I grabbed that. From the lovely Zarina, I grabbed the Holly Berry Pixie Chart from Bella Filipina. I had actually um, ordered like the full materials pack from her, but it wasn't ready yet. So I grabbed the chart 
because um, the material pack that I've ordered is like the speciality threads, the special beads, um, but not the DMC. So she gave me the chart so that I can get on with kitting up the DMC colours myself and then hopefully I will get all the other bits from her next time I see her. And it was the same for Nightingale. So I picked up the chart and obviously then that gives me all of the DMCs on the back that I need so I can get my colours ready for this and then get my speciality threads and beads next time I see Zarina. I also got this sticks kit from Zarina, which is a lovely one. So Mill Hill sticks kit. I don't know why they call them sticks, um, but there's like a whole series of these. Sorry about the terrible glare. Um, but this is the like Christmas themed Believe sticks kit with the lovely reindeer and the little cabin. It comes with paper parchment and just loads of threads. And I'm surprised that there doesn't seem to be any beading in this. I guess I just assumed with it being a Mill Hill kit that there would be beading, but there seems not to be any beads in here. Um, but that's fine. I love the design. Um, I got the Woodland Fairy Materials Pack from Zarina. So this is just like, this is everything. All the DMC, all the Crynic, all the beads, everything I need for Mirabilia Woodland Fairy, um, which is a chart that I already have. So now I just need to pick fabric and I'm good to go with that. Oh, Rachel, lovely Rachel on my table, um, gifted me her leftover beads for the cabbage sprite, the cabbage sprite, red cabbage sprite, I knew there was a word missing there. So red cabbage sprite here, who you can just see in the little design. I have the chart that Ina gifted me some time ago and Rachel gave me her leftover beads, um, which myself and Anita shared between us because it's such a small design, like barely any beads were used. So Rachel had loads left over. So myself and Anita split the leftovers. So that will be useful, very useful when I come to stitch her. Thank you so much, Rachel. Um, I grabbed this from the D stash table. This is a lovely luminous fiber arch chart. It is from the Friendship series and I already have the bird one from the Friendship series that my mum and dad got me for my birthday this year and now I've got the bunny one. So that's fab. Also on the D-Stash table was this amazing, amazing, amazing bargain of this beautiful chart. Um, so it's Pasponi. I can't say it. I'm terrible with names. I'm sure you all recognize it, but this has like nine of the DMC threads in with it, which you can see, um, as well as the chart. And it's also got the water lilies, which are just here. Um, so I will need to get the rest of the DMC and I will need to get all the beads. But yeah, the water lilies are in there, which is fab. Um, so yeah, that's great. That was from Linda's D-Stash. I picked up some needles from Marnie's Mixed Bag, just some 26s and 28s. Always useful to have. And then I got this spring topiary garden chart, again from Serena, and I have all the stuff to stitch this, I just didn't have the chart itself. So I picked that up. Somebody's coming down the stairs. <laughs> Who could it be? <laughs> it's Adam. Are you okay? Yeah, no, no, I'm not gonna edit it out. You're gonna be Floss Tube famous, even though no one can see you. Okay. Uh, so I got this spring topiary garden chart and there's two other charts to go. These are from D-Stash, D-Stash table. Uh, so I got the lovely Holly from the Pixie Couture collection. I've always thought that she's really lovely and she reminds me like a little bit of Miss Christmas Eve, just like with the colours and the theme of her, but obviously she's a lot smaller. So I thought she was lovely and I also grabbed this, which is the Rain Queen from the Black Forest Pixies collection. I'm just reading that off the back. And I wasn't 100% sure if I had her or not, but she was on the D-Stash table and I decided to grab her while I could. I'm pretty sure I don't have her. I think I have the Willow one that kind of is similar to her in style, but I don't think I have this one. I hope I don't. But yes, that is everything. This is my last bit. So this is a lovely chart and this is by, who's it by? 
cottage garden samplings and it's called January's Snowdrops from the My Garden Journal range. So I'm assuming that that means there are 12 of these designs in this range, probably one for every month. But yeah, I've just got this one and I just thought as a standalone piece that is absolutely lovely. It doesn't specifically reference any particular month, even though the name of the chart is January Snowdrops. I just thought that was lovely. Really nice. I don't think I'd seen it before either. So that is all my retreat goodies and haul. I hope you've enjoyed this little floss tube extra and I will see you all very soon in a few days for my main stitchy update for the month. See you soon. Bye. See you later. <laughs> you're gonna wave? No. No, you're not gonna wave, he's shy. He's too shy to wave. Go wave from there. You can wave. <laughs>